I see it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elijah podcast, our fifth anniversary season. I'm your host, Jacob Elijah, chief content producer and writer of jakesake.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. And if you're listening to us through on us on our audio platform, please give us a five star rating. Please give us reviews, download this episode, and more. I'm thrilled to welcome this actor and producer and fellow Midwesterner to this podcast. Yeah. He starred in The Circle, which is a Netflix film, no relation to the reality TV competition. <laughs> he also starred on American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, The Heart of Dixie in Nashville. He's also a three-time Emmy-nominated director and Emmy-winning director of the Amazon Prime video series Dark Slash Web. And as of this recording, he has over nearly 16,000 Instagram followers. So please don't welcome Michael Nardelli to the podcast. Oh, woo! Hi. <laughs> My awkward intro. What's up? How's everybody uh, doing? Hi, hi, Michael. Thank you so much for taking time. I just got to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Of course. It. Thanks for making time for me. Again, I apologize. We have some crazy live guests on Michael's end. So just let everyone know Michael has a couple of dogs. So yeah. there, if you hear him barking, it's from him, not me. I'm going to go on mute whenever that happens. Sorry about that. We've got. Oh, no got problem. No problem at all. There. No problem at all. It's a, li- it's a live podcast, my friend. Anything can happen when I'm the Jake Sick with Jacob. Your right. We've had yeah. dogs come on multiple times. <laughs> Forgive me. Yeah, we have a puppy here. If you want to meet him, actually, he's the one that's been the loudest. Come here. Come here, Bowie. Come here. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we have a puppy here. Thank you. He's got like 100 Instagram followers now, I think. Oh, hi, Bowie. I'm Jacob. <laughs> nice to meet you. You are such a good boy. You are so adorable. <laughs> he is most of the time. Right now, he's, he's a little hyped up, but most of the time, he's pretty good. All right. So let's get into it. So now we have enough. We had our Bowie cameo and some dog cameos. Let's get back to our conversation, shall we? Yes, let's do that. When did he get interested in performing? How did that passion evolve and desire to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? Um, I just, I grew up loving performing in movies and TV. Like I said, I grew up in, uh, stop, shut it up, come here. Um, you know, like small Midwestern towns and, and film and TV and all that stuff was like sort of my outlet. And I don't, it just, it just like resonated with me from moment one. I watched the wizard of Oz when I was a kid and then, you know, got my star Wars and Indiana Jones and all that stuff. And then like started getting into Hitchcock and everything and just would always make little short films with all of my friends and write them and direct them and act in them. So just like, just, I bonded with it instantly, like almost in the womb. I was telling stories in the womb. Awesome. Stay here. I'm also a Star Wars proud Star Wars fandom person. Yeah. I got to meet Ian McDermott this year when I when he was at Planet Comic Con Kansas City. You met Palpatine? Wow. That's uh that's a flex for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm not this is the only time I'm flexing because the thing is it's like I as he's my ultimate probably the ultimate villain if we're talking like Bella Lugosi, Dracula, Mark Hamill's Joker. Margaret Hamilton's Wicked Witch of the West, Evil Queen from Snow White, on like the Pantheon. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you don't you don't hear about a lot of like Palpatine encounters too. Like I, you know, you see people with their Comic Cons and everything next to, but I haven't I haven't seen him. So that's uh, that's that's good on you. That's good on you. All righty, all right. So <laughs> it's not about me. This is about you. So no, you have about- the opportunity to for an American Crime Story, The People versus O.J. Simpson. The Heart of Dixie, Nashville, and Revenge. So what were some of the lessons that you learned from these before these shows to help you grow as a performer? Uh, I think working on those shows and all like all those all the TV stuff I've done, recurring things, you really learn to work at a fast pace. Um, it teaches you not to be too precious with your choices and and like kind of like ruins whatever perfectionistic streak I have and I think other people have. Because it's just, you come in with all these ideas of what you want to do with the day and then you get one take and they're like, okay, we got to move on because there's so many people and they're doing so many pages per day and you're a, you're a piece of a bigger machine. So it's like humbling in that, in that sense. And yeah, just, just learning how to move at a pace and do your very best and then be okay with the fact that you maybe didn't get all those moments and all those choices and all those things you wanted to do with the scene. 
um, just for financial reasons and everything, you know, logistics, they have to move on. Um, it's definitely a good, good learning lesson to just hit your mark and pray for the best and, and move on. Absolutely. And I actually recently had one of the natural castmates on my podcast, Claire Bowen. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. You get so off- nice and her husband is amazing. So did you have a chance to interact with her while you were on Nashville? Uh, I did. I was there for the last episode. Um, so I kind of got to meet like this. It was the series finale. So I kind of got to meet everybody. And um, I think Tim Matheson was directing that episode or they were doing two at the same time. So they had a lot, like I said, they had a lot going on. You kind of like hit your mark and move on. But yeah, I got to meet the whole cast and they were all, all awesome. Rachel was awesome and, and everybody else. I had, I had a lot of fun on that show. That's amazing here because the thing is, we think of Glee, Empire, Nashville, Nashville, those three, and even, um, and even uh, the cat, the Bra Smash from Bra from NBC. Like, yeah. Those were the four main musical dramatities that really made an impact. Yeah. And I'm a big musical fan. I love my, so I didn't even know Heart of Dixie was so like musically inclined too until, uh, until I booked it and started watching some of it. So, um, yeah, we need more musicals. We need more musicals, right? I'm, I'm a big fan. Absolutely. However, we have to leave the musicals and go into the horror. Uh, because in almost 10 years ago, you started producing a popular Netflix original film, Circle, which I said, no relation to the reality, famous reality TV show called Circle. Correct. So can you describe the impact of that film to my audience? The impact of Circle? To your audience. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's coming up on its like 10 year anniversary and um, it, it keeps growing in its following. Um, it keeps having these kind of like renaissances, like during the pandemic, a lot of people seem to watch it and, and reach out to me and write in, they usually try to write back. Um, Squid Games kind of gave it another burst of energy, but I think, you know, no matter who watches it, they have a strong opinion, which I'm proud of. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people think it's hilarious. Some people think it's horrifying. Everybody has like a very interactive experience with it. And I think no matter what stays to the end, because they want to see how it ends. And I think it just resonates because I think we, we, uh, Mario and Aaron who wrote and directed it and I produced it and we really, made sure that kind of all these different voices and perspectives were represented in it. And because it's science fiction, we were able to have a lot of sort of like frank, important topical discussions in the movie, sometimes uncomfortable that have only gotten more and more topical as, as time has gone on. Um, So I think that's like the legacy of the movie Um, was just putting all these people into a melting pot and as uncomfortable as it, gets it's the truth like this these are conversations that people are having and would definitely be having in that sort of like life or death um situation i agree and however you receive some big new announce some big news coming because the circle has a sequel coming up so are you how are you participating in this sequel and why or why not uh i am participating in the sequel i've been working on it for really we've been working on it for a really 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 long time and it's finally coming together in the way that it's meant to come together and um i'm producing it i've been producing it i'll keep producing it and um i'll i could be involved in other ways you know like we have a lot of surprises in the movie for fans of the first uh circle so yeah i'm I might be involved in other ways. You know, I might be uh, a caterer on the set. I might be a gaffer. I might be a on-set photographer. I think, I think I'll probably be involved in a lot of ways. You might scare people. Yeah, yeah. Scare people, surprise them, make them laugh. It's a really cool story. It's, again, super topical to, like, the world we're living in now. There's been a lot of changes in the last 10 years um since the first one came out so it's still still going to be topical and uncomfortable and fun and exciting and it's got a little fresh take on it um but still like the dna of the first movie so we're excited to, to finally tell the story 
that's what I'm happy for you guys. But however, I may have to have watch it with a blanket covering my head because I don't do horror films. Yeah, well, you can do it. I, you're brave. You could do it. It's not a, uh, you know, it's not super gory. It's more just horrific in the way people treat each other. So maybe you can tolerate that. It's not blood and okay. guts. It's not blood. Okay. Not blood as long as you had, don't have any giant man-eating plants, symbiotes, a Power Rangers villain that was a lava creature named Dark Specter, any reference to Thriller, Michael Jackson's ghosts or zombies, I'll be fine. <laughs> None of that. Just just everyday cruel human beings, which, you know, you're on social media. You see it every day. You know how it, how, how it works. You can handle it. You can take it. You would survive the circle. Okay, okay. I'm a in. Old in Westerner. <laughs> All righty. So I'll make sure to keep on my burning breath, and I'll make sure to film, me, film a, Instagram, a social media story say, Hey, Michael, why the heck are you making me scared? <laughs> it's it's good for you it's good for you. you gotta face your fears right absolutely all righty so what have been some of the challenges that you face staying in the inter- in our industry and how do you overcome our ops or your any obstacles uh hmm good question there's new obstacles every day i mean it's definitely been a challenging time between the last five years with I mean, for everybody, pandemic, which shut down a lot of things. We had a strike, um, big strike, long strike. Um, things are always changing with streaming and, tick, you know, it's definitely everything's evolving. Um, let's see. How how do I survive these challenges? Was that the question? Um, That's correct. I think just making sure I'm being creative and with a, in a creative community. Um, you know, I'm doing a play here in L.A., this summer and that and that's been a really great experience to work on really 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 like a tough hard challenging material um outside your comfort zone you know no act breaks just two a two-person play um i think doing stuff like that keeps you challenged and creative and fresh and then you take that into back into film and tv things and um yeah i just and then writing my own material um producing circle all this time, just always making sure I have something that's fulfilling me on like a creative artistic expression, you know, getting that expression out. Um, just cause that alone is like what makes me happy and what is fulfilling. And then any outside success or accolades or whatever the hell comes along is like icing on the cake. So as long as my base level need to be creative and perform and express is, is, um, is happening and, and I have ways to control that now, then I, I feel good. And that's how I survive and keep going. I hope that was a good answer. Well, I, feel yeah, like- Michael, and I think the biggest challenge is definitely doing a two person play because that's like, okay, nothing can go wrong. Yeah, and stuff does go wrong, and then you like you roll with it and make that part of the show, and that's been really fun. But yeah, definitely a a, a one act two person play has been an amazing. This it's called North of Providence, um, and it was written by Edward Allen Baker's this play that came out in the eighties, and we revived it. Um, but yeah, just doing stuff like that feeds feeds your artist's soul and kind of gets you back in what's important, what you love about it, and then all the like the minutia and the logistics of like entertainment industry and things changing you're like just that noise isn't as loud because you're like oh i'm doing it i'm doing what i love already absolutely absolutely so we got to talk about um several years ago you were nominated for several emmys and you won for amazon prime video dark web so what's it be so can you describe a share to my audience describe what describe a dark, dark web, web. Um, yeah, so Dark Web, um, well, it's an eight-episode series um, available on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it. Uh, it also uh, has become pretty topical, I would say, over the last couple of years because uh, well, I don't want to give away the ending. But um, let's just say technological advances that are happening every day uh, factor into the story. Um you know, that, that, that two letter word there, well, AI, let's say, you know, like there's some artificial intelligence stuff happening on the show um, that I think sort of predicted things that are happening now. 
spoiler alert. But anyway, yeah, it's available on Amazon Prime and it is an eight episode anthology series. Um, we worked on it with a lot of the Circle partners in crime. So my brother, Tim Nardelli and Mario Michoni, who worked on Circle, we all came together and wrote and directed and produced this indie series that made its way to Amazon Prime and got some Emmy nominations. And it's, it is scary. It's got some scary moments. It's talks a lot about like how technology is, is evolving and factoring into our daily lives and daily traumas. <laughs> oh yeah. And we thought that Al and Skynet were scary. Look, you and I know we watched those movies decades ago. So we saw this coming. I still am shocked that like people are just diving headfirst into all of it. And I'm like, did you not watch 2001, man? Did you not watch The Matrix? Did you not watch Terminator Judgment Day? Terminator. We know how the story ends. You and I do. But apparently other people um, think it's got a happy ending. Maybe it will. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's scary and dark web, um, addresses that, that fear and that, that stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about social media. So okay. what is your favorite social media app to connect with fans? Um, I, I actually have been downsizing my social media. I, I am on Instagram kind of like exclusively now. Um, I, 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 I'm on Twitter. I look through there. I like to read stuff, but I'm not really interacting there anymore. Um, so Instagram is where I'm investing my time socially. Um, it's where I can talk to you, talk to you, talk to you, talk to me. I have fun with it for the most part. Um, and um, that's where you can find me, uh, at Vidardelli on Instagram. Awesome. So, guy, so last question, Michael. Yes. So besides those two things, where can I find The Circle and uh, your other projects? Okay, so Circle is on Netflix. You can watch it on Netflix. You can type in. Remember, it's just Circle, not the Circle, not the reality show, not the Tom Hanks movie. It's like a red logo, 50 people, looks like a chessboard. Uh, That's on Netflix. And Dark Web is on uh, streaming on Amazon Prime. Awesome. So, guys, did you miss an episode of the Jake Sink with Jacob L.A. Show podcast? Visit our channels on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts. I heart Spotify and Spreaker, Jake Sick with Jacob Elisher, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and you, Twitter, and YouTube. Jacob Elisher, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. Now, guys, want to know what's going on with AGT? What's going on with the Mass Singer? Want to find more of my music reviews or any more of my interviews? Well, head to the blog and start it all. Jake'sShit.com, now entering year. 13. Woo! All righty. Michael, it was a pleasure to have you and your and your incredible puppy family. And thank you. <laughs> and I cannot wait for the circles to and get scared by it. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Jacob. Congrats on year 13, too. That's awesome. That's major. Thank you, so, thank you so much. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Good. Bye. Bye. Bye.